Family Theater presents Irene Dunn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents the ninth floor of the plaza. And now, here is your hostess, Irene Dunn. I hope all of our listeners are familiar with Family Theater's purpose. It's to spread the practice of family prayer throughout all the homes of the world. A big job, but don't underestimate the power of prayer. And now to our transcribed drama, The Ninth Floor of the Plaza, featuring Vic Perrin as Will. Ah, getting to where I can't write a simple lead. Yeah? Yeah, Mr. Johnson. No, no, leave the front page the way it is. If I haven't brought this thing on the flower show over by five, put back the two last paragraphs in the story about the Schwartz boy's appointment to Annapolis. Yeah, we'll run the flower show next week with pictures of the winners. Neither threatening skies nor the enforced absence of their president, Mrs. Willis Strickland, prevented members of the Hillside Garden Club from staging their eighth annual... Yeah? Excuse me. Are you Mr. Strickland? That's right. Editor and publisher of the Hillside Weekly Citizen? Yes. I am Hitilominlo Kran, alternate member of the Burmese delegation to the United Nations. Well, well come in, please. Please, ha have a seat. Thank you. <laughs> Hillside is somewhat off the beaten track, so we don't get many visitors of your caliber, Mr... Uh, Kran. Uh, Kran. Uh, I hope you'll excuse the shambles I call my office. Oh, no apologies are necessary, Mr. Strickland. Well, this is the day the citizen goes to press, and it gets pretty hectic. I understand perfectly. And on top of everything else, my wife has been up in the assembly all this week. She's supposed to be back this afternoon, but I don't Mrs. know... Mrs. Strickland? Yes, the state assembly. It's the first time a woman's been elected from this district. You must be very proud of her. Oh, I am, but, uh, well, it's left me a little short-handed. Quite naturally. Well, and Mr. Cran, uh, let me get a pencil here. And suppose you give me your first impressions of Hillside. I beg pardon? Well, just what you've seen so far. I'll wrap out half a column or so for today's edition and then use the rest of the stuff for a follow-up next week. Say, I better have Johnson hold the front page. Uh, Mr. Strickland, I did not come here to give you an interview. No? Didn't you receive my letter? Letter? Last week, from New York. I addressed it to the paper. Oh, my gosh, wait a minute. Uh, letter to the editor? Well, you are the editor. It's probably somewhere in this pile. I... I don't know how to apologize, Mr. Crowner. If you will listen to me for a moment, please. It is not as a newspaper man that you interest me. It isn't? I am looking for the Willis L. Strickland who served in India during World War II with the 403rd Provisional Unit. Yeah? Are you that man? Well, yes, I was with the 403rd. Ah, in the, in the letter that I wrote to you... Oh, if you can wait just a minute. I know it's got to be here somewhere. Uh, I can tell you just as easily... It concerns an incident that occurred in the spring of 1944 in a place then called Alangpaya. It was a sort of autonomous principality that lay along the border of my country and the province of Assam. Is the name familiar to you? Yes. Uh, do you also remember someone named Shinsobu? I sure do. Then you are the lieutenant who made the sortie into Alangpaya. Well, myself and a Sergeant Finley. That was the entire party. Unless you count Caruso. Caruso? Our mule. And we sure counted him. He was the indispensable member of the group. He carried our transmitter, the hand generator, and enough sea rations to feed two men for eight days. The way Finley and I had it figured, the job wouldn't take much longer. Hey, what do they call this stuff? Good night, Gus. Oh, brother. Oh, this isn't so bad. I understand it can get up to ten feet high. Never mind. This will do. Thanks. Uh, starting to get light. Yeah. Hold it! Hold it, Caruso! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in fine voice. Now shut up. Take the other end of this map, will you? Yeah. 
Yeah, I better break out a poncho. We'll need a light to read by. I'll get it. Hold still, Coots. Hold still. Okay, grab the other corner. All right. I got it. Let's get down as low as we can. Yeah. Yeah. You got the light? Yeah. See any cracks? No, we're okay. Yeah. Hmm. From the lines on this, you would think we we're following the Pompton Turnpike. They make it look easy on paper. Yeah. Well, we covered a little better than eight miles. Yeah, Caruso's beginning to feel a pinch. Maybe. Most of last night was uphill. Let's see. We ought to hit this ridge here sometime early tomorrow morning, huh? About then. Well, let's get some sack time, huh? Okay. Hey, you want some chow? No. We'll wait till the sun's up and make a fire. Yeah, good enough. Oh. You know, I still don't get it. Huh? This job. If there is a nip radar station here, why don't we just send in some Mustangs and blow the whole place up? Because they're not sure it's here. Well, it's got to be somewhere pretty close, the way they've been intercepting the air support for Merrill's outfit. Yeah, well, the way G2 explained it to me, close doesn't count. Technically, we're on neutral soil. Alan Pai is not at war. Yeah, well, that I can believe. Huh? Who'd start a fight over this swamp? The Alan Payans might if our Air Force started skip-bombing their palace for nothing. Their... They got a palace? They got a king. I don't think he's living at the Y. Well, I still say they can't be neutral and have a Japanese radar station at the same time. They're either one or the other. That's why we're making this hike. Hmm? To find out which. <laughs> The plan was simple enough. Finley and I were to get as close to the main village as possible, a place called Dumiga, and try to spot the Japanese radar installation. When we had it pinpointed, Finley would radio the map coordinates to headquarters. They'd give us 24 hours to start back, and then they'd send in the Mustangs. Well, that's it. 24 hours from now, they'll hit this place. Okay. Let's pack up and put it on the road. Yeah, how do you like the nerve of these gooks? Hmm? Neutral. <laughs> With the antenna right on top of the palace. Pretty well concealed, too. You'd never see it from the air. Yeah, say, uh, how's about we bring Caruso downhill to carry this stuff back, huh? Sun's almost gone. I guess it's okay. Probably thinks we deserted him. I'm looking forward to the day we can. Boy, hey, you know something? What? I thought you were giving me the business when you said this place had a palace. <laughs> It isn't the wall door. Well, it ain't no packing crate, neither. I'll bet it's got 10, 12 rooms. Anyhow. And all that marble and glass windows. How do you suppose they ever got it through the jungle? Uh, they tell me labor's pretty cheap around here. Yeah, well, that's nice, because there'll be lots of repair jobs opening up day after tomorrow. Hey. Hmm? Isn't this a tree where you had Caruso tied? No, it couldn't have been. <laughs> well, it was. Look, his halter. Chewed right through. Why, that dumb... And feel dumb... it. Feel it. It's dry. He's been gone quite a while. Oh, brother, with the food and the ponchos. Well, that isn't the worst of it. What if he wanders down into the village and somebody spots him? Who'd miss him? Well, that's what I mean. Well, Lieutenant, we better be getting out Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We still got the job to think We've about. We've done the job. Not if they find Caruso, we haven't. They'll come nosing around and find the transmitter and put two and two well, together. we can bury No, no, I got a better idea. We'll radio back and tell them to send the Mustangs in right now. Yeah, but there isn't time. They'll have another 10 or 15 minutes of daylight. It's the only chance we've got. Come on. We went back down the hill to the clump of trees where the transmitter was hidden. A mile or so up the valley, I could see the last of the sun glinting on the spired roof of the palace. Finley put on his earphones and opened the key, and I started to crank the generator. I still say they won't have enough light to pinpoint the target. Okay, so they'll bracket it. If they dump enough stuff, they're bound to hit something. Put up your hand. Huh? Better do it. He's got us. Stand up, both of you. You are surrounded. Is either of you an officer? I am. Lieutenant Willis Strickland. Major Higeshi Okuto. I guess we're your prisoners, Major. Or let us say rather, we are your military escort. What? Well, this is foreign soil, neutral territory. Yeah, yeah. I assure you, Lieutenant, the natives of Arangpaya have taken no sides in our conflict. In fact, their ruler knows only slightly of its existence. Uh -huh. And then how come he let you put your radar unit right in his palace? Oh, you mean our weather station? Pretty good. It seems you were about to disclose that little secret to your friends. Uh... 
Just about. Stand away from a transmitter, please. Major. If you please. <laughs> now, may we accompany you to the Paris? I've got the feeling we don't have much choice. Uh, and uh, if I may correct you on the one point, the ruler of Arang Paya is not a he. King Kyaswa died over a year ago. The throne is now occupied by his daughter, Princess Shinsobu. Major Okuto and his squad of Japanese infantrymen marched us down the trail that led to the village of Dumiga, then along a narrow dirt road that served as the main street, and up the steps to the palace. Although it seemed to be the tallest building in town, it consisted of only one story. Its roof was studded with gables and minarets covered with gold leaf. Okudo ushered us past two smiling guards at the front door, then down a wide hallway and into a kind of old-fashioned sun porch overlooking a garden. I trust you will be comfortable here, Lieutenant. I'm sure I will. You mind telling me if there's a place like this for the enlisted men? Oh, oh you will both be quartered here, Sergeant. Hmm? Through that door is your bedroom, and uh, through that, the bath. You seem to know your way around pretty well. I have been interned here for the past seven months. Oh, is that what we are, interned? I believe it is the customary status ascribed to those apprehended entering a country illegally. Major, you on the payroll or something? I beg pardon? Well, you're an illegal entrant yourself. Where do you get off taking us in? Oh, just being cooperative. You will find it pays to be cooperative here. Uh, Major Okuto. Mr. Anarata, do come in, please. These are the Americans. Oh, greetings, greetings. How do you do? Mr. Anarata is a prime minister. A stormbirds, Major. Stormbirds on the weather picture. Oh, really? Are you sure? I have just seen. You are waited immediate. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I must get down to the base. Major, just a minute. Uh, sorry, Stormbird. You mean airplanes. I think I should tell you, Lieutenant, we have never heard the word airplane in Arangpaya. Good evening. I bring a message, gentlemen, Lieutenant. Her Highness will welcome now. You mean the princess? Shinsobu herself, immediate. Well, uh, could I have just a minute to clean up, Mr. Prime Minister? A minute. I will tell herself. Uh, step out when you are clean. One guard will show the door. Thanks. Thanks very much. Hey, Lieutenant. What kind of a chop suey parlor we get ourselves into? Uh, see if there's any running water in there, will you? You haven't got any time to shave. I gotta scrape a little of this mud off me. Yeah, there's some here in the pitcher. They got a basin, too. Well, fill it up. You got any clean fatigues? Nah, Caruso is carrying them. <clears throat> Listen. We got ourselves a problem. Yeah, the storm birds? Yeah, that's probably the air support for Merrill. <laughs> Well, this will be the last time anybody picks them up on the on the weather picture. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah, by tomorrow night, this... T Holy cats, wait a minute. Exactly. We got a room and bath right on target. I wondered when it was going to hit you. And no transmitter to call them off with. Plus, which, if that prime minister's as thick as he sounds, he and the princess don't have any idea what the major's got set up in their basement. Weather station. They've never even heard the word airplane. You know, I'm not so sure I don't believe that. Hand me a towel, will you? Just look at this place. Early Diamond Jim Brady. And I've got a strange feeling I've seen it all somewhere before. Yeah, fast asleep at three in the morning following a late snack of pig's knuckles. No. No, I mean really seen it or a picture of it. You got a comb? Well, half the teeth are gone here. Yeah. It's all right. So is half my hair. What are you going to say to the princess? I don't even know if she speaks English. Well, that prime minister must have picked it up somewhere. Yeah, well, if she learned English from him, we're really in trouble. Wish me luck, buddy. The throne room was at the west end of the palace. I was admitted by two heavy-set guards who accompanied me to a raised dais set along the far wall. The only light in the room came from two flaming braziers which stood on either side of the throne. Princess Shinsabu was dressed in a robe of heavy gold brocade, and her face looked as white as wax. I guessed her age to be about 20. You are owner of the American Mule. I would like to buy it. Well, I'm not exactly the owner, Your Highness. My grandfather was once in America and rode such a mule. He spoke often of it. I have a picture of him astride the mule, see? <laughs> that, 
It's quite a souvenir. Have you ever been to America? No, I have never. Do you know the plaza? I beg pardon? The plaza in America. Uh, you mean any special plaza? In the New York City. Hotel Plaza. Oh, oh that plaza. The plaza. Oh, of course, of course. But as I know of it, I, I've never stayed there. This is the plaza. Floor number nine. This? The palace. What? My grandfather bought plans of it. That was where he stayed in America. Is it not beautiful? Yes, it, it's very beautiful. I, I thought there was something familiar about it. Does it not make you homesick? Yes, in a way. And you cannot sell the mule? I would be pleased to buy the mule. Well, I'm afraid I don't have the authority to do that. The mule belongs to the United States Army. Well, in fact, I, too, and my friend, Sergeant Finley, belong to the United States Army. We're soldiers. Like Major Okuto. Well, not exactly like Major Okuto. You see, he's on one side and we're on the other. Ah! You are having a war. Yes. Yes, that's what we're having. Anarata has spoken of it, my Prime Minister. We do not have war in Alangpaya. So I understand. Grandfather forbade it. He said it was noisy and everyone lost their tempers. Uh-huh. Also, that in any case, Alan Paya would lose. So we do not have war. Who is winning? Winning? You or Major Okuto. Oh, well, at the moment, I'd say the Major's a little ahead. Mm, you will catch up. Your Highness, that uh, brings me to a rather delicate point concerning the uh, uh, plaza here. Is it not beautiful? Yes, and I'd hate to see anything happen to it. But you see, Major Okuto has something in the basement. The weather station? No. No, that's what I want to tell you. It's not a weather station. No? No, it's a radar station. Ah! Well, you know what that is? No. Oh. Uh, you know what a radio is, don't you? A radio. Your grandfather didn't tell you anything about uh, radios or airplanes when he got back from America? Only of the mule and the plaza, and that was years later when he had grown old and no one else would listen to him. Well, when did he make the trip? It was his honeymoon. Uh, well, let me see. Radio is like a small box, like a magic box. You talk into it, and your voice can be heard by people hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away. Do you know them? Who? The people who are thousands of miles away. No, you don't have to know them at all. Then what is there to say? Well, well, you can know them. Let's say you do know them, and you have something very important to say to them. Some news. Exactly. Some news. Now, with radio, you can tell them this news over thousands of miles in a matter of seconds. Ah! Oh. You see? Yes. Well, that's radio. Like shouting from hill to hill. Um, in a way, yes. I have not heard the Major shouting in the basement. Well, that's different. He's not shouting. He's listening, or rather watching. For the stormbirds. Well, that's what he calls them, but they're really American airplanes. Belonging also to the United States Army. Now you're beginning to get the picture. What would the United States Army say if you told them you lost the mule? Your Highness... In a way, that is true. I realize Grandfather that... Grandfather said that in America, it is finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Princess, I am trying to tell you something very important about this war. Oh, the audience is over. What? It is time to feed my fish. They sulk at the bottom of the pool when I am late. Your Highness... You and Major Okutu may tell me of the war tonight at dinner. You are excused, huh? And, of course, I couldn't say anything that night at dinner, not with Okuto right across the table from me. Though I sat up until daylight, I couldn't think of a plan to get the princess out of the palace the next afternoon without giving the game away. So, that morning after breakfast, I put the problem up to Finley. As far as I can see, it's just tough luck. There's no way we can get a hold of headquarters and tell them not to send those planes in. I know. As far as that goes, we're going to have trouble enough getting out of here ourselves. All we got to do is stroll up the main street about quarter of five, and when we get to the edge of town, make a run for yeah, it. Yeah, well, I just hope it's that easy. If there were just some way we could con her into coming along with us. Ah, uh, no soap. Hmm? Now, that prime minister told me she never walks anywhere outside the palace. She always gets carried in a sedan chair or something. Oh. I don't think we'd get very far trying to cart her out of town that way. Wait a minute. Hmm? I just...
just got a wild idea. Very wild. About what? Getting the princess out of the palace without having to make her walk. What? Stick around. I won't be long. Hey, where are you going? To request a special audience with her highness. It took some doing, but by mid-afternoon, all the arrangements were complete. The prime minister had been doubtful at first, but Princess Shinsabu finally won him over and permission was granted. At exactly 4.47, Sergeant Finley led Caruso, our mule, up to the front of the palace. A brightly colored blanket had been thrown over him and two red pom-poms stuck out from behind his ears. Princess Shinsabu's eyes were shining as I helped her onto Caruso's back. Mr. Anuratha and I took up flanking positions on either side of the princess. Sergeant Finley tugged gently at Caruso's yellow halter, and the strange procession started up the street. Oh, it is a beautiful new lieutenant. I'm glad you like it, Your Highness. Do you not agree, Mr. Anuratha? Oh, immediate. It is one thing of joy. Uh, how you doing, Your Highness? I do what Grandfather called the greatest pleasure in America, mule back riding. It's just too bad Major Okuto wasn't able to come along. Oh, he seeks for storm gods on the weather picture. Uh, incidentally, Lieutenant, uh, do you have the time? Yeah, three minutes. Come on, Caruso, quit dragging your feet. Uh, has your highness ever viewed her kingdom from that ridge up there? No, I have never. Oh, it's a wonderful sight. At this time of day, you can see the sun shining on the roof of the palace. Oh. And that uh, trail up ahead leads right to the spot. Oh, I would wish to see it. Oh, your Highness, I must caution of the steepness of the ascent. Please, Mr. Allen. Also, within the forest are beasts and insects. You have said the mule is a thing of joy. Well, Caruso won't lose his footing, if that's what you're worried about. He's never stumbled in his whole life. It is but a short way, please. Oh, the beautiful mule continues despite me. Unnecessary is my permission. Oh, thank you, Mr. Anurata. We don't have far to go. I, I hear a strange buzzing. Buzzing? Hmm. Do you hear anything, Sergeant? Uh, probably one of those insects. Uh, I'll be on the lookout. I hear it, though. It comes close. Reverse the mule. I'm afraid we can't do that, Mr. Anurata. What is wrong? Back to the par plaza. I order. Keep going, Sarge. Come on, Caruso. Lieutenant. Those sounds you hear are stormbirds. Oh, the major will see on the weather picture. Not for long, he won't. They're American stormbirds, airplanes. And here they come, in over the treetops. Your Highness, get off the mule. I never walked outside the palace. Come on, it's important. Those stormbirds are going to lay some eggs. Oh, they swoop in beauty toward the plaza. Hit the dirt, everybody. What is happening? What are they doing? Keep down, Princess, keep down. I'll tell you as soon as we get out of here. The attack came in five separate waves, and by the time the last one had passed over, the palace was a heap of flaming rubble. The princess was broken-hearted, and Mr. Anuratha wanted to go back to the village, but we knew it would only be a matter of hours before the Japanese moved in to occupy Alangpaya, so we forced both of them to come along with us. It took three days to walk out. The princess rode, of course, on Caruso. Then she escaped alive after the bombing. That's right. So did the Prime Minister. <sighs> this is something that was not known until now. You see, since the granting of independence to my country and other of the Malay states, we have been endeavoring to reconstitute the old principalities on our borders. I see. To reinstate the rightful monarchs, or their heirs, in the interests of political stability. Well, now, I, I don't think you'll have much luck reinstating the princess. Come in. I've had a terrible day. How are you, darling? Oh, fine, fine, that honey. That ridiculous man from the Radford district, Calhoun, I think his name is, everyone was pressing for adjournment, and he simply would not yield until he delivered some senseless harangue about crop rotation. Honey, I'd like to present this gentleman. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you do, sir? Mrs. Strickland? Mr. Tillaminlo Cran from Burma with the UN. Oh, it's a pleasure, Mr. Cran. Of course, you know exactly how I feel having to listen, as I'm sure you must do so many absolutely inane speeches. Honey. When all you want to do is to get on with the work. I I was just telling Mr. Cran how we met. Oh, how nice. Darling, did you cover the flower show and did they miss me? They were devastated. Uh, Mr. Cran has come down here, especially from New York, to talk to you about Alangpaya. How charming. You see, Your Highness... Oh, you mustn't call me that, Mr. Cran. Not anymore. I'm an American citizen now. Oh, oh of, of course. Uh, well, in that case... That's I... what I was going to tell you, Mr. Cran. Honey, 
They're thinking about putting Alangpaya back in business. That swamp? Well, the, the feeling was, Mrs. Don't Strickland... Don't waste your time, Mr. Cran. Take it from a native. Even at its peak when I was in charge... <gasps> Darling, did you call Uncle Annie about my collision with the milk truck? Oh, I forgot. Uh, Uncle Annie? He may still be in his office. Excuse me, Mr. Cran. Oh, of course. This crazy fool cut right in front of me last week. You'd think he'd learned how to drive in the jungle. Hello, Annie? Oh, well, this is Mrs. Strickland. Will you have Mr. Anoratha call me as soon as he comes in? Thank you. Mr. Anoratha is Uncle Annie? The ex-Prime Minister. He's practicing law in Boston now. Well, I, uh, I really must be going. It's been delightful, Mr. Cran. Good luck. Thank you, Mrs. Strickland. And if you ever get down to New York, I am at the UN. Oh, we'll be in New York next month, the weekend of the 4th. To celebrate our 12th anniversary. We like to call it our 11th second honeymoon. How sentimental. Uh, then we will have lunch together. Uh, where will you be staying? Where else? The ninth floor of the plaza. Don't you love a charming conversationalist? I do. I mean the sort of person who has a knack of making the small talk of life sparkle with wit and personality. This art of conversation is not a trick learned from books. Rather, I think it springs ready-born from a generous spirit. Good conversation is one of the true luxuries of life. Close as it is to us, on the tip of our tongue, so to speak, there never seems to be enough of it. And that brings me to the point I want to make. Prayer is nothing more than good conversation with God. Children, in their trusting way, sense the truth of this. They always think they are confiding directly into the ear of God. It's a pity we sometimes lose that trust when we grow up. It is we who change, not God. He is changeless. So family theater again reminds us, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed The Ninth Floor of the Plaza. Irene Dunn was your hostess. Featured in our cast were Vic Perrin, Richard Peel, Virginia Gregg, Herb Vigran, Marvin Miller, and Jay Novello. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of state, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present All Brides Are Beautiful, starring Ruth Hussey. Ray Bolger will be your host. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.